Good morning. I'll have you please stand and we'll begin right away with the blessing, reading together the blessing for the lighting of the second candle of the Advent wreath. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. We'll finish lighting the last wreath, or the last, uh, the two candles. Thank you. All right, you may be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to the Sunday, for, or second Sunday of Advent. It is wonderful to have you all here today. A couple of announcements I first want to make mention of. First of all, I want to thank, um, I believe Lori was leading the service last week, and we also had Stella uh, fill in for me. We were gone. It uh, took, a, took a big road trip down to Texas for Thanksgiving, and um, it was a great time. So thank you for those who helped out. Otherwise, whoever, uh, whoever else was involved in that, I uh, truly appreciate it. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. It is good to be back. Um, okay, I, there are not very many announcements, but I do want to make I do want to um, make mention. I know that there has there was conversation about the Chris, the upcoming Christmas program that the kids um, would be doing, and I just want to make sure that I get that in the bulletin or get an announcement in place if we have a date for that. Um, are you are we where are we at with that as for as far as? Hopefully next Sunday. Okay. So, so next Sunday, and we'll, I mean, we'll be also, um, we, can, we can verify or confirm that on Facebook um, as well. So just keep your ears open, keep your eyes open online. Um, and that is the plan. It's, it's a, uh, let's see what next week will be, December 11th. So next week, December 11th, plan for that. And um, we'll go from there as far as uh, uh, making that confirmed here over the course of the week. Also, uh, let's see, if down on some prayer concerns, um, Katrina had mentioned this week that her father uh, is recovering from a recent surgery, so we'll be praying for Joel. Um, Joel, your, 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 your dad, not, not Joel, your husband. Although Joel, your husband might want some prayers too, just in general, so. Um, but uh, reform, recovering from a recent surgery, and as we've been praying for also her cousin, Scott Ross, uh, please continue to be uh, praying for him as he is battling cancer. Uh, Jerry Lagodensky and his um, continued battle as well, and Susie Nitsky. Um, there are no other new prayer requests, I think, that we've received this week, but are there any that need to be added this morning? You're welcome to, to make mention of that now. Any, any other prayer requests? Okay, are there, are there any other uh, announcements, just general announcements? Been a... Having been gone for the last week or so, it's just I feel a little out of the loop. So I might have received some announcement that I didn't put in or something. So please let me know if that's the case. Okay. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank, I, I know that the cooks were uh, involved in putting the tree up this year. I don't know if anyone else helped, but certainly thank you to the cooks uh, for your role in that. You've done that the last several years, and uh, we are grateful for that. So thank you. It looks beautiful. It's nice to have up. All right, if there is no other announcements, uh, that's your last chance. Um, we'll have you then stand for the brief order of confession and forgiveness on page 56. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, you may be seated now for the opening hymn today, which actually is an insert. So this, this is uh, one of my favorite, of course, a lot of, my so a lot of the songs are my favorites, but this is one of my favorite Advent hymns. But we are, I'm giving you an insert because although it's in the hymnal, uh, there are two verses included on this particular version that are not in the hymnal. So verses 2 and 3 might sound a little bit new to you, but nonetheless are um, incredible words and reminders of the season that uh, we are in and heading into. So... Um, I just hope that you enjoy the two new verses that we have coming here. Long to see. 
star sadness He whose glories knew no end By His life He brings us gladness Our Redeemer, Shepherd, Friend Leaving riches with the noble bone Right. If you would, please stand again for the Curie, page 57. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free.
Please remain standing for the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'll invite our reader forward for today's readings. Oh, you do, there's a children's sermon you're saying? Okay, sorry. Children's sermon, um, actually. I forgot. Okay. So all the children are invited forward. Um, if you're a child ages 1 to 99 at heart, you can also come. No. Good morning. Um, so today's reading has um, John the Baptist, who was a cousin of Jesus and a really important part of Jesus' story. And his job, he was a prophet, his job was to come ahead of Jesus and tell everyone to get ready. He was letting everyone know that Jesus was coming and it was time to get ready. And the most important thing to do to get ready, he said it over and over again, was repent. So you guys probably, or maybe you don't know, but you might know that the Bible was not written in English. Okay, <laughs> Jesus and all the people that wrote the Bible, they did not speak our language. So the original word for repent, um, oh gosh, now it just jumped out of my head, Jordan, is it? Metanoia. That's what I was going to say, but I just questioned myself. Okay, so the original Greek word for repent is metanoia, which in that language means turn around. Okay, repent is another way to say turn around. So now let's think about this in our minds. You guys have probably played with magnets before, right? What do magnets stick to? Metal. Yes. Fridges, yep. And they stick to each other, right? Sometimes. But what, okay, Jackson was shaking his head. What, what, what do you need? Mm-hmm, iron, yeah. Okay, so Jackson was shaking his head. So when do magnets not stick to each other? Right, they have poles, I think that's what they call it. So if they're facing one way, they'll stick. And if you turn them around, they will not stick. Have you ever played with magnets like that? You cannot make them go together. You tried so hard. Hmm. But it wasn't for me, yeah, okay. So, okay, so this is the nature of magnets. So what we're going to think about is how are we, which direction are we facing, okay? So repent, when John the Baptist is telling us to repent and turn around, he's telling us to turn away from sin, okay? We don't want to be facing, we don't want our poles to be aligned with sin, okay? We don't want to be attracted or magnet, magnetized to that. Jesus is on the other side. We want to turn our magnet towards him and be attracted to him, okay? So what are the things that we need to do? These are the things we kind of have to consider, okay? Because it's not, it's not a stand up and turn around with your body thing. It's an inside my heart, turn my heart around. So what do we need to do to make sure that our heart is turned toward God and not towards sin? Do you have something you'd like to say? Yeah. What? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot easier to turn ourselves towards Jesus when we're in a safe place, right? We make better decisions when we feel safe and when we don't feel threatened by people around us. So picking good friends, that's a good idea. 
Anyway, so that's something that you can think about, or what are the, what are the things I need to think about to turn my heart towards Jesus? Let's pray together, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for the ways in which you, um, you, kinda, you let us know that you're coming. Thank you for giving us um, a heads up and telling us to get ready. This week, I pray that you would give us all the understanding of how to turn our hearts towards you so that we'll be attracted and magnetized to the good things that you offer us. In your name we pray, amen. All the kids could go downstairs now. We're going to work on our Christmas program. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips shall be, uh, I'll start that again, um, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Here ends the first reading. The psalm this morning is, can be found on page 248 in the front of your green hymnal. Page 248, we're going to recite Psalm 72 responsively by half verse. We're going to do verses, read verses 1 through 7 and then 18 and 19. Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, your righteousness to the king's son. that he may rule your people righteously, the poor with justice. that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people. The little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressed. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field. Like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Continuing on verse 18. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel. Who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. The second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 15. 
For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that by steadfastness and by encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's trustfulness, truthfulness in order to confirm the promise given to the, uh, the uh, patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As, as it is written, therefore, I will praise thee among the Gentiles and sing to thy name. And again it is said, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And further, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come. He who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the regions along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, does not, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Sarah, can you please turn the pulpit mic off? Thank you. Well, as you've probably grown accustomed to, I, I tend to jump the gum, 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 jump the gun this time of year. I, uh, I can't help it, but even though it's Advent season, I tend to uh, put a little Christmas into this particular season because I, both in the songs that we choose and in, in the coming song we'll sing after the message, but 
Um, even in my sermons, I, I can't really help it. Not least today in the title of this message, which um, I guess is really jumping the gun. So the title is The Magic of Christmas. The Magic of Christmas. Now, when I say that phrase, I'm pretty sure everybody has something come to mind, right? I mean, it's, it is one of those cultural phrases. It's, a, it's an idea that we, we associate with Christmas. It, perhaps it is, for you, a memory of childhood coming out on Christmas morning and the gifts being magically under the tree um, from a, uh, you know, a, uh, a nice big guy. Um, maybe, maybe, and there's, it's just being parents and seeing the, the glimmer in your children's eyes around Christmas time. It's just fun. There's something about Christmas. There is a sense, there is a chemistry that exists that we all can probably say, yeah, yeah, I get it. I know what you're talking about, the magic of Christmas. Um, so what I want to do today, though, is, is ask you to maybe set that aside. Whatever that magic is that you think of, um, when I give a title to a sermon called The Magic of Christmas, set that aside and instead um, open, open your hearts, open your minds to, to seeing the magic of Christmas here in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to start, though, with a story from Scripture way back in Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 28. Uh, I've, after harvest finished, I, I made a goal, and, and so this really isn't saying much, because as we, we all know, these kind of like goals, year-long goals, last about a month. So I'm about three weeks in, and so I'm still hanging with it, but I'm trying to read through the Bible in the next year. And so, randomly, not randomly, but... I mean, uh, obviously then you're going to start with Genesis. And so recently I was reading the story, uh, it's in Genesis, Genesis chapter 28. And it's the story of Jacob's ladder. Um, it's probably one that you probably know of as Jacob's ladder. And you might know the sort of outline of it. But uh, in general, the context is this. And this is what I want to start with because I, I think it's important. The context is this. Jacob, who's not a real great guy. Let's just be honest. I mean, he stole his brother Esau's birthright. And where we come in on the story is where he stole his blessing by, by putting his brother had hairy arms. You know, some guys have hairy arms, some don't. And so his father was blind, but um, his father Isaac. And his, so he put on animal skins on his arms to, to go into his father and steal the blessing that was meant for Esau. So just, I mean, really underhanded type stuff. Not a great guy. But nonetheless, we all know that Jacob falls in the line, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, which ultimately the line of Israel, which comes down to Jesus. And so this is a story about God's grace, too, shown to really not a great guy. So here we have Jacob. He just stole the blessing from his brother. And now he's on the run because he's scared. Scared his brother's going to come with revenge in his eyes. So he's scared. So he runs. He flees. And his mom, who was part of the, the whole heist as well, is like, you need to just get out of here. Your brother's going to kill you. Your brother is really going to be mad. And it's like, well, duh. So anyway, where we come in here, Jacob is on the run. And it says here, listen, in chapter 28 of Genesis. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and laid down in that place. There he had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to the heaven. And behold, the, he the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. A reiteration of the promise, the original promise to Abraham, of course. Then in first, verse 15, Behold, I am with you. And will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done 
what I have promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Surely, perhaps we could say this, some kind of magic in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob here, it says at the very beginning of our story, departed from Beersheba and went to Haran. And as Sarah was talking about the original language in the New Testament, in the Old Testament is Hebrew. The name of the town Haran, Haran means crossroads. So the story goes, as Jacob is coming along, he comes to a crossroads. Well, what we know is that he's coming to not only a horizontal crossroads, but as we read further, we realize that Jacob is in a vertical crossroads as well. And the story of Jacob's ladder is the illustration of that idea. That Jacob has come to a place where he has seen heaven and earth come together. Visualized by a simple ladder and angels ascending and descending, he senses the closeness of God to a place that he did not even God is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Heaven and earth have touched. In my mind, there is this magic about this story. But when I think about Christmas, I think of this story as simply a prototype story for the story of Christmas. A story where heaven truly invades earth in the person of Jesus Christ, where God the infinite takes up space and kicks in the womb of a human girl. Think of that. The crossroads exists. Haran comes to us each and every Christmas in this particular way. And just as Jacob says, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not even realize it, so often it seems like every Christmas we come to a point where it just seems mysterious and magical and there's something just good about it. People's kindness comes out in a way that it usually doesn't. People's generosity. Um, people are more patient. It's almost like heaven is invading earth. Every Christmas that rolls around. It's a space, I think, well, there is an author that, that names this space. There's a name given to this kind of space, this in-between, this maybe space where you're transitioning from one thing to another. Um, and it's the author, his name is Victor Turner, and he calls it liminality. It's a weird word. I've never heard it before. But it's a liminal space. People may, might have heard it referred to that. And it's this space where all of a sudden you realize the old is gone, and the new is there, but you're not quite in either yet. It's a space for reflection. It's a space for reconsidering. Ultimately, it's a space for hope. Hope of what, what might be coming. This is what Christmas, I think, brings us each year. And as we turn to our reading today that was from Isaiah... I want to read it for you again, keeping in mind this transition that occurs, this space that happens, a space that comes to us at Christmas that gives us space to reimagine a different world, a different life, a different future, one invaded by the Spirit of God that changes things. It says in Isaiah, it says, Then a shoot. If you look at the picture on the front, that's the shoot it's talking about. They got. Then a shoot will spring forth from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight, and he will delight 
in revering the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and his breath of his lips. He will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be the belt around his loins and faithfulness the belt about his waist. Verses 1 through 5 here are well known as the sort of illusion type texts of Christ, of Jesus. That Isaiah is writing here in an Old Testament way and in a sort of obscure way about this coming Jesus. Of course, coming as a child on that first Christmas. He's talking about this sort of space that is coming about, something is going to change, and when this change occurs, when you have this reality come about, this is what's going to happen. And the rest of the text says this, things will change. The wolf will dwell with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze. Their young will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play by the hole of a cobra. And the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah here is prophesying. He's prophesying the magic of Christmas. He's prophesying this liminal space that we come to just like Jacob came to. This space where we're at a crossroads, where we see heaven touch earth, where earth and heaven come together, and all of a sudden, the the unthinkable becomes thinkable. The unredeemable in our life becomes redeemable. That which has dragged us down can be shed. Things are changing. As I said, the unthinkable becomes thinkable. And in that space, what we bring or what we receive more than anything is hope. And I want to share with you again I'm doing a lot of rereading of the texts because we hear the texts ahead of time and then I refer to them and you might not remember them. But in Romans, the reading we had from Romans chapter 15. It says there, Paul writes in, cha- in verse 4, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. So he's referring to the Old Testament, everything that has ever been written. Right? He says, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. The stories in that we go back to way throughout the book of Genesis and then throughout Scripture itself, those stories, he says, are written so that we might have hope. Hope that the unthinkable might become thinkable. Hope that in a world where everybody is fighting, that for some reason we might find a reason to get along. That change can come, in a sense. Christmas becomes a space for us to reimagine that world. A space for us to have that hope. That even when we look at our lives and even when we look at the world around us and all we see is a dead stump, that we might have hope that from that dead stump a bud might shoot forth. I want to end by reading um, just a brief Advent reflection on this tender bud. 
written by a, a lady named Sarah Freeman. She writes this about Isaiah 11. She says, A tender bud growing from the root of Jesse is Isaiah's hope. Hope that the Spirit of God will bring understanding beyond that which is seen with human eyes and heard with human ears. Hope that a child, yes, a child will grow in the knowledge of God to treat the poor with mercy and kindness. Hope for a land of peace and loving kindness. For who but a child can have faith that the impossible is worth working for? And we, like Isaiah, know our world aches for a tender bud of hope. People everywhere tremble in fright, cry for help, and flee in panic. So with Isaiah, we yearn for a tender bud, sprouting with terrible faith that abundant life is still possible. And as we yearn, perhaps even we are born into God's kingdom as a tender bud of hope. As the Spirit of God hovers over us, do we hear with our hearts the cry of the oppressed? As the Spirit of God hovers over us, do we too find childlike faith to create a land where we do no harm, a land full of peace and of loving kindness? In this season and always, may the Spirit of God hover over us. And may the magic of Christmas this year be in fact the Spirit of God hovering over us as we live in this space, the space of wonder, the space of peace and of joy and ultimately of hope. Amen. So in keeping with my jump in the gun, we're going to sing What Child Is This? Of course, I choose that as... It's kind of a shocking question, right? What child is this? Right? Think of it like that, like a rhetorical, like how crazy is it that heaven has invaded earth in such a way? And I say use the word invasion because he's broken in. What child is this? Page 57. 40. Page 40. Joy, joy for Christ. 
Why do I always lose my bulletin? Sorry. <laughs> okay, please stand at this time for the Apostles' Creed on page 65. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we come to you today. We come to you amidst this Advent season, praising and worshiping you. Praising and worshiping you for the opportunity to join together, to come into your presence, to come into a space that only you can provide, a space where we might be safe to reimagine a different world, a different life, a better world, a better life. A life ultimately where you are present. Lord, when we think of heaven invading earth, when I say that phrase, when I think of heaven itself, I think of it as the space where you are fully present. And so it is as that comes into earth, as the two come together, as you first came that first Christmas. We now know that your presence is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, as we go about our lives this Advent season and this Christmas season, may your presence go with us. May you always be inviting us into a space, that magical space, that spirit hovering space, where we might see a different future, a better future, a future where, Lord God, you are calling us, wherever that might be in our own lives. Lord, in your mercy. We, we today pray for the nations. Um, we continue to pray for peace in those nations that are in conflict, including uh, Ukraine. We ask, Lord, for that war to, to cease and for aggression to stop, for the death to stop. We pray for peace there, Lord God. We pray also for nations in poverty and ask for your provision and for your goodness to be felt. We pray for our own nation, Lord, always praying for healing where there is division. Help us to be a nation that can see eye to eye and move forward together. Lord, in your mercy. Those who are in need today, Lord God, we ask for your comfort and for your healing, for Joel Clayman, recovering from recent surgery, for Katrina's cousin Scott Ross and Jerry Lugadensky, battling cancer, persistent cancer in a difficult place. Lord, give them hope today. Give them peace today. May your nearness be with them. We pray for Susie Nitsky and her uh, battling a long-term issues and health concerns. Give her patience, Lord. And Lord, for those that are not mentioned here, but the needs that exist in our community, in our church, we ask that you would be the God who meets all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. For this church, Father, we thank you for your presence here today. 
We thank you that in a space where you are present, it truly is. Um, it truly is a space that we can reconsider things, where we can recon, where, where we can reflect, where we can ask ourselves, who who are you, God? Who are you calling us to be? Where are you calling us to go? Give us patience with each other and with ourselves that in this season we may step into your will. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would have you be seated and we'll do the offering. While the ushers come forward, please. Please remain standing now and uh, turn with me to the prayer on the bottom of page 67. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, if there is, at, before I begin with the communion, if there's anybody who has not received a communion cup, um, we, can, we can pass the, the, the basket around. Just raise your hand. Whoever's got one? Okay. Um, I don't, though. I'm the only one. Thank you. Please remain standing then and join, uh, uh, turn to page 68 for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of, res promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, please remain standing for our closing hymn, uh, page 57. And there's another Christmas one, but maybe a less familiar one, so it won't quite feel like one. Let our gladness have no end. a great week and uh, you're welcome back next week again we'd love to see you we'll be having the kids program again during the service next week so have a great week bye